Welcome back. Today's topic is methods of money laundering. The whole idea of money laundering is to make it impossible for authorities to trace the dirty money while it's cleaned. There are lots of money laundering techniques that authorities know about and probably countless others that have yet to be uncovered. Here are some of the more popular ones. Let us start with smoothing and structuring. The details of the techniques are as given below. 1. Money laundering through smoothing, this is a method of placement whereby cash is broken into smaller deposits of money, used to defeat suspicion of money laundering and to avoid anti-money laundering reporting requirements. The people who are involved in such kinds of money laundering are called smurfs. Smurfs adopt simple step of money laundering. They are aware that if a large dump of cash is deposited in a bank, it comes under the purview of banking surveillance. Hence, they break it into smaller deposits in different regions and different banks to avoid reporting thresholds. Smurfing looks simple but is a complex and time-taking process as each day Smurfs deposits small chunk of amounts. 2. Money laundering through cuckoo smurfing the term cuckoo smoothing originated in Europe because of similarities between this typology and the activities of the cuckoo bird. Cuckoo birds lay their eggs in the nests of other species of birds which then unwittingly take care of the eggs believing them to be their own. In a similar manner, the perpetrators of this money laundering typology seek to transfer wealth through the bank accounts of innocent third parties. The cuckoo smurfers hire legitimate account holders who for a commission without having the knowledge that they are actually involved in money laundering transfer money as per the instructions from the smurfs. 3. Money laundering through structuring, a person structures a transaction if that person, acting alone, or in conjunction with, or on behalf of, other persons, conducts or attempts of conduct one or more transactions in currency in any amount, at one or more financial institutions, on one or more days, in any manner, for the purpose of evading the CTR filing requirements. Going ahead let us understand the money laundering through tax evasion, tax evasion is using illegal means to avoid paying taxes. Typically, tax evasion schemes involve an individual or corporation misrepresenting their income to the tax authorities. Misrepresentation may take the form either of underreporting income, inflating deductions, or hiding money and its interest altogether in offshore accounts. Going ahead, let us understand money laundering through cash intensive businesses. Cash intensive business is one that receives the majority of its revenue from a non traceable source, such as cash currency, money orders, barter, or some form of digital cash. Cash intensive businesses and entities cover various industry sectors. Most of these businesses are conducting legitimate business, however, some aspects of these businesses may be susceptible to money laundering or terrorist financing. Common examples include, but are not limited to, the following, 1 convenience stores, 2 restaurants or hotels or bars or nightclubs, 3 retail stores, 4 liquor stores, 5 vending machine operators 6 parking garages The cash intensive business is hugely used to launder money. These businesses may be companies that actually do provide a good or service but whose real purpose is to clean the launderer's money. The launderer can combine his dirty money with the company's clean revenues in this case, the company reports higher revenues from its legitimate business than it's really earning or the launderer can simply hide his dirty money in the company's legitimate bank accounts in the hopes that authorities won't compare the bank balance to the company's financial statements. The launderer let's say owns the restaurant would funnel his ill-gotten gains through the books of the restaurant fraudulently showing the funds as profits from food and other sales. Going ahead, let us understand the money laundering through black market Colombian peso exchange, this system is the largest drug money laundering mechanism in the Western Hemisphere came to light in the 1990s. The Colombian black market peso exchange or simply called BMPE, has developed over the years to the point that it is widely portrayed, and generally accepted, as being a tool used by narco-traffickers to launder money. The foundation for the BMPE was laid in the 1960s by the government of Colombia, albeit inadvertently. 
the government did two things that gave birth to the system, specifically, they banned the US dollar, and they established high tariffs on imported goods. The idea was to strengthen the value of the Colombian peso, and increase the demand for Colombian goods. Their intentions notwithstanding, this served to create an underground economy, generally referred to as a black market, and it created a black market exchange system where people, known as cambistas, exchanged Colombian pesos on the streets of Colombia for US dollars on deposit in American financial institutions. The black market peso exchange system operates through brokers who purchase narcotics proceeds in the United States from the cartels and transfer pesos to the cartels from within Colombia. Let's see the steps. The dollars are placed that is, laundered into the United States financial system by the peso broker without attracting attention, the dollars are then sold by the brokers to businessmen in Colombia who need dollars to buy United States goods for export, and goods ready for export is often actually paid for by the peso broker, using the purchased narcotics dollars, on behalf of the Colombian importer. This underground financial and trade financing system is a major, perhaps the single largest avenue for the laundering of the wholesale proceeds of narcotics trafficking in the United States. It also reflects the desire of Colombian importers, who may otherwise be legitimate businessmen, to avoid paying extensive Colombian import and exchange tariffs by smuggling goods into Colombia. Finally, this system exploits United States exports in the recycling of narcotics dollars. The U.S. Customs Service believes that the United States exports that are purchased with narcotics dollars through the BMPE system often include household appliances, consumer electronics, liquor, cigarettes, used auto parts, precious metals, and footwear. Going ahead, let us understand the money laundering through shell companies. A shell company can be defined as a non-operational company that is, a legal entity that has no independent operations, significant assets, ongoing business activities, or employees, have no physical presence, and produce nothing. In essence, shells are companies that exist mainly on paper, they are frequently used to shield identities and or to hide money. A shell company can often be identified by a number of red flag indicators including, 1 no phone number, 2 no email address, 3 no physical address, 4 no company logo, 5 no contact person, 6 no federal identification number shell companies can open bank accounts and wire money like any other company, making them a favorite tool for money launderers to hide their business and assets from authorities. Also, money can be laundered through shelf corporation. Well, a shelf corporation is a paper or shell corporation that is administratively formed and then put on a shelf for several years to age. A shelf corporation doesn't engage in any real business, but during the aging period some efforts may be undertaken to establish a credit history, file basic tax returns, open a business bank account, and other simple actions to demonstrate some activity. Shelf corporations are legal and do have legitimate purposes. They are frequently used for holding personal or business assets. Another common purpose for the creation of a shelf corporation is as a turnkey business package that can later be sold to someone who wants to start and operate a company without going through the effort to form a new one, or, sold to and used by someone who may not otherwise qualify for a bank loan, line of credit, or government contract because they or their existing company do not have the required credit scores or a two to five year established business history. By purchasing a shelf corporation, an entrepreneur now instantly owns an established company that has been in business for several years without debts or liabilities. Criminals can also create, purchase, and use shelf corporations. In some cases, they may use one with a name similar to a targeted legitimate company in order to specifically impersonate that company and deceive creditors or suppliers. In other cases, they may use a shelf corporation, or a series of shelf corporations, to appear to be a well-established, legitimate business in order to defraud other businesses, lenders, or financial institutions. Going ahead, let us understand the money laundering through offshore banking, 
the offshore financial centers were originally known as tax havens and later became banking havens. Offshore banking activity is practiced with non-resident clients and usually very rich. In the global economy, offshore financial centers offer many advantages, but their main characteristic is the banking secrecy. Keeping the banking secret and the development of money laundering operations may encourage illegal and criminal activities. Tax havens have the following main characteristics, 1. Lower taxes or total lack of the income tax. 2. Financial and banking secrecy and ensuring commercial information protection. 3. Important role of the banking activity for Promotional advertising through which are publicized the fiscal advantages offered in order to attract foreign investors. Offshore financial centers provide financial management services to foreign users in exchange for foreign exchange earnings. There are many channels through which offshore financial services can be provided. These include the following, one offshore banking which can handle foreign exchange operations for corporations or banks. These operations are not subject to capital, corporate, capital gains, dividend, or interest taxes or to exchange controls. Two international business corporations, IBCs, which are often tax-exempt, limited liability companies used to operate businesses or raise capital through issuing shares, bonds, or other instruments. Three offshore insurance companies, which are established to minimize taxes and manage risk. Onshore insurance companies establish offshore companies to reinsure certain risks and reduce their reserve and capital requirements. 4. Asset Management and Protection Asset Management and Protection allows individuals and corporations in countries with fragile banking systems or unstable political regimes to keep assets offshore to protect against the collapse of domestic currencies and banks. Individuals who face unlimited liability at home may use offshore centers to protect assets from domestic lawsuits. Also known as fiscal paradises they are generally small states with political and economic stability which favor the development of financial activities. The most famous and popular offshore banking centers in the global market are the Cayman Islands and Switzerland. Other well-known established destinations for offshore banking include the following, in alphabetical order Bahamas, Barbados, Belize, Bermuda, British Virgin Islands, Cyprus, Dominica, Gibraltar, Ghana, Hong Kong, Labuan, Malaysia, Liechtenstein, Luxembourg, Malta, Macau, Mauritius, Monaco, Montserrat, Nauru, Panama, Seychelles, Turks, and Caicos Islands. Criminals prefer financial centers and offshore jurisdictions because the anonymity guaranteed by their banking, tax, and company regulations provides an effective shield against requests for information by law enforcement agencies. Anonymity, in fact, is an essential requisite for the laundering of criminal proceeds and their reinvestment in the legitimate economy without incurring the law enforcement risk. Going ahead, let us understand the money laundering through travel agencies. Travel agency is any person who sells, as an agent and not as a principal airline tickets, rail tickets, hotel and motel reservations, and cruise reservations, or some combination of these services. The definition excludes direct sales by service providers such as hotels and tour buses. Travel agencies can also be used as mode of money laundering for example, prepaid airline tickets that is, tickets purchased through a travel agency for use by another person, usually in another city can be especially used as money laundering tool. One can purchase an expensive airline ticket for another person who then asks for a refund. Another example can be sending a tour group to a country and making an offsetting payment in a foreign entity's US or other account while instructing the account holder to cover the cost of the group's trip. Travel agents can also arrange complex payment or invoicing for customers, thereby structuring cash payments to avoid currency reports. This method is one way that businesses involved in informal value transfer systems, such as Hawala, transfer funds between entities in various countries. Going ahead, let us understand the money laundering through prepaid cards. Prepaid cards are one of the newer developments in the world of consumer electronic payments. Prepaid cards have incorporated in them prefunding and are integrated into the Visa, MasterCard, and other payment card networks. 
money laundering risk associated with prepaid cards lies in their easy transportability and the relative ease of moving and potentially accessing monetary value anonymously. Prepaid card programs do not require customer identification or that do not include rigorous monitoring of suspicious activity are most at risk for money laundering abuse. As these cards are integrated into Visa and MasterCard networks, money is easily accessed all over the world hence, making laundering of money more easy. Going ahead, let us understand the money laundering through charities or non-profit organizations, non-profit organizations or NPOs, and charities are defined by their purpose, their reliance on contributions from supporters and the trust placed in them by the wider community. They often process large amounts of cash and regularly transmit funds between jurisdictions. NPOs have also traditionally operated under less formal regulatory control and generally, a less rigorous form of administrative and financial management. It is argued that the combination of these factors exposes the sector to an elevated risk of criminal and terrorist abuse. Going ahead, let us understand the money laundering through vehicle sellers, purchasing vehicles with structured checks and money orders, trading in vehicles for other ones and conducting successive transactions of buying and selling new and used vehicles to produce complex transaction layers, arranging complex payment or invoicing for customers, thereby structuring cash payments to avoid currency reports and accepting third-party payments, particularly from jurisdictions with lax laundering. Controls makes vehicle sellers vulnerable to money laundering. Going ahead, let us understand the role of gatekeepers in money laundering. Gatekeepers include lawyers, notaries, trust and company service providers, real estate agents, accountants, auditors, and other designated non-financial businesses and professions or DNFBPs, who assist with transactions involving the movement of money in the domestic and international financial systems. Gatekeepers are thought to be among the most common laundering agents, or at least facilitators. Gatekeepers often utilize the confidentiality afforded by attorney-client privilege as a tool in money laundering schemes. Gatekeepers can cite this privilege to bypass the rules concerning disclosure in numerous financial institutions, including Know Your Customer rules. This allows the gatekeepers to engage in a range of activities on behalf of their clients anonymously, including the establishment of shell companies, buying properties, opening bank accounts, and transferring assets on the behalf of their clients with associated parties or brokers. Going ahead, let us understand the money laundering through trade-based money laundering or TBML. Hundreds of billions of dollars are laundered annually by way of trade-based money laundering. It is one of the most sophisticated methods of cleaning dirty money, and also one of the most difficult to detect. By definition, TBML is the process by which criminals use a legitimate trade to disguise their criminal proceeds from their unscrupulous sources. The crime involves a number of schemes in order to complicate the documentation of legitimate trade transactions, such actions may include moving illicit goods, falsifying documents, misrepresenting financial transactions, and under or over invoicing the value of goods. Going ahead, let us understand the money laundering through trust and company service providers or TCSPs TCSPs are businesses that provide any of the following services to third parties, one acting as a formation agent of legal persons, two acting as, or arranging for another person to act as, a director or secretary of a company, a partner of a partnership, or a similar position in relation to other legal persons, three. Providing a registered office, business address or accommodation, correspondence or administrative address for a company, a partnership or any other legal person or arrangements, for acting as, or arranging for another person to act as, a trustee of an express trust, 5. Acting as, or arranging for another person to act as, a nominee shareholder for another person. Trust and corporate entities provide the basis for a range of economic activities in modern economies. Although they have many legitimate applications, such as business finance or estate and tax planning, 
they can be misused by criminals for illegal purposes such as hiding the ultimate beneficial ownership of assets, legitimatizing the integration of crime proceeds with the financial system, or layering of crime proceeds through various forms of investment such as in the stock market. Trust and corporate structures may be set up by terrorists and used wholly or partly for financing of terrorist activities. Trust, for example, may be established for charitable purposes and subsequently misused to finance terrorist activities. TCSBs are also vulnerable to money laundering activities due to the below reasons as they help criminals in one. Establishing and maintaining domestic or offshore legal entity structures, for example, trusts or companies. 2. Facilitating or conducting transactions on behalf of the criminal. 3. Receiving and transferring large amounts of cash. 4. Establishing complex loans and other credit arrangements. 5. Introducing criminals to financial institutions. And 6. Facilitating the transfer of ownership of property to nominees or third parties. Going ahead, let us understand the money laundering through real estate. Criminals may be drawn to real estate as a channel to launder illicit funds due to the 1. Ability to buy real estate using cash. 2. Ability to disguise the ultimate beneficial ownership of real estate. 3. Relative stability and reliability of real estate investment. 4. Ability to renovate and improve real estate, thereby increasing the value. Criminals are also motivated to buy property for further profit or lifestyle reasons. Compared to other methods, money laundering through real estate, both residential and commercial, can be relatively uncomplicated, requiring little planning or expertise. Large sums of illicit funds can be concealed and integrated into the legitimate economy through real estate. Going ahead, let us understand the money laundering through use of loans and mortgages. Criminals use loans or mortgages to layer and integrate illicit funds into high-value assets. Loans or mortgages are essentially taken out as a cover for laundering criminal proceeds. Lump sum cash repayments or smaller structured cash amounts are used to repay loans or mortgages. This allows illicit funds to be commingled with legitimate funds. Loan back schemes are an example of this method. Loan back schemes involve criminals borrowing their own illicit funds. Foreign offshore companies controlled by criminals are used as an apparently arm's length lender. The loan is then used to buy real estate and repayments are made using illicit funds. This process hides the true nature of the funds and gives the loan repayments an appearance of legitimacy. Going ahead, let us understand the money laundering through precious metals, gems, and diamonds. There are several ways launderers use precious metals, gems, and diamonds as given below. One money can be moved out of the origin country to a foreign country by importing precious metals and gems at overvalued prices exporting the covered goods at undervalued prices. Two money can be moved into the origin country by importing precious metals and gems at undervalued prices or exporting the covered goods at overvalued prices. Precious metals, precious stones, and jewels constitute easily transportable, highly concentrated forms of wealth. They serve as international mediums of exchange that can be converted into cash anywhere in the world. For these reasons, precious metals, precious stones, and jewels can be highly attractive to money launderers and other criminals, including those involved in the financing of terrorism. Launderers use precious metals, especially gold, silver, and platinum which have a ready, actively traded market, and can be melted and poured into various forms, thereby obliterating refinery marks and leaving them virtually untraceable. Going ahead. Let us understand the money laundering through corporate structures, launderers have specialist skills in, and knowledge of, the establishment and administration of corporate structures. These structures may include layers of companies and trusts in several foreign jurisdictions. These structures allow criminals to conceal illicit funds, obscure ownership through complex layers, legitimize illicit funds and in some cases avoid tax and regulatory controls. Establishing corporate structures in jurisdictions with preferential tax regimes and secrecy provisions provides a layer or insulation between criminals and their activities. 
This helps criminals to put distance between themselves and their illicit activities and funds. Going ahead, let us understand the money laundering through insurance products. Insurance products, particularly life insurance, provide a very attractive and simple means of laundering money. Some popular methods as given below used by criminals and launderers, one cash out policies prematurely, despite penalties for the early withdrawals. Two policies paid using checks and wire transfers purchased with criminal money. Three use of dirty money to purchase a general insurance policy to insure some high value goods, which is also usually obtained through illegal means by criminals. Four paying a large top up into an existing life insurance policy. 5. Purchasing one or more single premium investment linked policies, then cashing them in a short time later. 6. Premiums being paid into one policy, from different sources. 7. Making overpayment on a policy and then asking for a refund. Going ahead, let us understand the money laundering through sales and purchase of high value goods arts and antiques. Criminals and launderers find it easy to convert illicit money to clean money through purchase of high-value goods arts and antiques and then selling the same in open and legal markets. Launderers use chains of dealers and auction houses to effectively do transactions which make feels the illicit money to be legal. Going ahead let us understand money laundering through correspondent banking, until the Bank of New York scandal erupted in 1999. International correspondent banking had received little attention as a high-risk area for money laundering. The general assumption had been that a foreign bank with a valid banking license operated under the watchful eye of its licensing jurisdiction and bank had no obligation to conduct its own due diligence. The lesson learned was that some foreign banks carry higher money laundering risks than others as they are seriously deficient in their bank licensing and supervision. The reality is that correspondent banking is highly vulnerable to money laundering for a host of reasons as given below, 1. Culture of lax due diligence, big banks providing correspondent banking are found to be poorly informed about the banks they are servicing, particularly small foreign banks licensed in jurisdictions known for bank secrecy, offshore banks, or weak banking and anti-money laundering controls. Account information is often outdated and incomplete lacking key information about a foreign bank's management, major business activities, reputational and regulatory history, AML procedures, and transaction monitoring procedures. At larger banks reviewing is often weak or absent between correspondent bankers and foreign clients of foreign banks. Wire transfers are frequently the key activity engaged by the foreign bank, the correspondent banks did not monitor those transfers for filing STR subpoenas or bank under legal proceedings directed at foreign banks or their clients were not always brought to the attention of the correspondent banker. Large correspondent banks usually maintain two or three thousand correspondent accounts at a time and process billions of dollars of wire transfers each day. Yet these banks did not invest in software, personnel, or training needed to identify and manage money laundering risks. 2. Role of Correspondent Bankers Correspondent bankers also called the relationship managers should serve as the first line of defense against money laundering. However, many appear to be inadequately trained or insufficiently sensitive to the risk of money laundering taking place through accounts they manage. This is because, the RMs are paid for the number of new accounts they open or the amount of money their correspondent accounts bring into the bank. Their primary mission is to expand business, open new accounts, increase deposits, and sell additional services to the correspondent accounts. While doing this, they failed in their duties such as evaluating prospective bank clients, and reporting suspicious activity, if any. The RMs are not collecting the required standard due diligence for foreign banks nor their clients allowing them to perpetrate through correspondent accounts. Three. Nested correspondence, another practice in correspondent banking which increased money laundering risks in the field is the practice of foreign banks operating through the correspondent accounts of other foreign banks. There are numerous instances of foreign banks gaining access to the correspondent bank either directly or through another foreign bank having an account in the correspondent bank. The lack of knowledge that the foreign bank has actually nested in correspondent account another account of foreign bank is the major flaw. 
4. Foreign jurisdictions with weak banking or accounting practices, the international banking system is built upon differing bank licensing and supervisory approaches in the hundreds of countries that currently participate in international funds transfer systems. Some countries require heavy requirements to obtain license however, jurisdictions such as BVI which offer offshore banking services does not require huge investments with either central banks nor huge norms and regulations. The increased money laundering risks for correspondent banking are apparent in such banking systems. Also, in banking systems with weak accounting practices in foreign banks, accountants refusing to provide information about banks' financial statements they had audited or about reports they had prepared in the role of a bank reviewer or falsifying certifications provided by the accounting firms all lead to misuse of correspondent banking for money laundering. 5. Bank Secrecy bank secrecy laws further increase money laundering risk in international correspondent banking. Strict bank secrecy laws are a staple of many countries including those with offshore banking sectors. Some jurisdictions refuse to disclose bank ownership. Some refuse to disclose the results of bank audits or examinations. Some jurisdictions prohibit disclosure of information about particular bank clients or transactions to correspondent banks or regulators. 6. Cross-border difficulties, due diligence reviews are difficult to obtain from foreign banks. Investigations around the solvency of banks, negativity is difficult to ascertain as limited information is available in public records. In some countries, have few or no public records. Travel to foreign jurisdictions by correspondent banks to gather first-hand information is costly and may not produce immediate or accurate information. Seven money laundering through payable through account, the 2012 FATF recommendations define the term payable through accounts as correspondent accounts that are used directly by third parties to transact business on their own behalf. In other words, the institution providing the correspondent banking services allows its correspondent banking clients accounts to be accessed directly by the customers of that correspondent, Example the customers of the correspondent may have check writing privileges or otherwise be able to provide transaction instructions directly to the institution. This is different than a traditional correspondent banking relationship in which the correspondent bank is executing transactions on behalf of its customers. The arrangements pose greater risk to an institution if it does not have access to information about the third parties accessing the account. This account becomes a gateway to the launderers. Regulatory standards for managing the risks of payable though arrangements may vary significantly by jurisdiction, but at a minimum, the institution providing such services should take additional steps to ensure that their correspondent banking client has conducted sufficient client due diligence on its customers which have direct access to accounts of the correspondent bank, and that such information can be provided upon request. It may also be appropriate for the institution to conduct its own due diligence on the third parties. 8. Money laundering through concentration accounts. Concentration accounts are internal accounts established to facilitate the processing and settlement of multiple or individual customer transactions within the bank, usually on the same day. These accounts may also be known as special use, omnibus, suspense, settlement, intraday, sweep, or collection accounts. Concentration accounts are frequently used to facilitate transactions for private banking, trust and custody accounts, funds transfers, and international affiliates. That's all for today. Thank you. Hope you all now have a fair idea about methods of money laundering. And you may now apply this knowledge to your day-to-day -day work. Have a nice day ahead. Stay tuned.